All right, here's a video on how to use the Keysight E3620A power supply. Uh, this is a basic dual power supply. You have different uh, voltage controls and uh, selectors, and then outputs as well as ground. Uh, we're gonna use the Keithley just to show the voltage differences. This is a very basic power supply. It has, um, it's basically a constant voltage. Uh, all you do is select the different voltages you want at each output. You can see there's a big clunker on and off button. Uh, this one selects uh, what's displayed on here, volts, uh, voltage, and this is how you uh, change the voltage. So and the V1 corresponds to V2. So if you want to change the voltage out of these wires, use this dial and you press this button in is on and out is off. So we're going to turn this on and we're also going to turn on the key for the meter. Now one of the things you want to keep in mind when using this particular uh, power supply is that as soon as you turn the power on, the voltage is on at the terminals. So one of the things that you want to avoid doing is connecting your circuit to the power and then turning it on. A uh, person before you may have used it at a, a much higher voltage than you intend and you might blow up your circuit. So always before you connect the, the power to your uh, breadboard, make sure you turn it on and make sure you select the voltage you want. In this case, let's just turn it up to five volts. All right, now I'm just going to use these patch cords uh, from the multimeter uh, just to measure the voltages. So we're going to connect this to the input and this to the reference. And so we can... Hey, now it's, uh, that's fairly accurate. I wouldn't worry about 10 millivolts. And move it over to the other one. You can see, e even though we're not, we don't have this, uh, we don't have V2 selected to be displayed, it still has voltage output, and it still has uh, power. So if we turn this to the V2, uh, we can see that it displays the correct voltage. So always keep in mind, whenever you have these plugged in, make sure you have the voltage you want. And if you are using this one, make sure that this button is pressed in. So you don't want to be uh, sitting here, adjusting this up and up, and you see the multi, and you see the volt uh, not changing, but you're inadvertently applying more and more voltage to your circuit. So that's a good way to fry a circuit. So one of the things that's nice about uh, a benchtop multimeter is that it has short circuit protection and overload protection. So this is a constant voltage power supply. It will, at the as best as it can, it will maintain this voltage and the current will vary. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about this particular power supply as well is that it has over voltage protection. So I can actually take these connect them together, and you can see the voltage drops to about nothing, uh, but the current goes all the way up. So this power supply has about a, a, a max output of one amp, and uh, so it's already exceeding it. It recognizes that as a short circuit, and it drops the voltage. So if you do short it out, you're not harming the power supply. I have gone and switched out the uh, multimeter probes. So I've just gone with the traditional probes. Now the Simplest way to get power from the power supply to your circuit on this particular breadboard is to just use the binding posts. So I've got a little wire here that uh, uh, unscrew this and you can slip a wire into it. Usually there's a hole underneath, but then you just screw it down, tighten it down. Always make sure that you're, you're pinching onto the metal of the wire, not the insulation of the wire. That's a great way to not get power to your breadboard. So this one, I've already got it pre-wired to uh, run power from the uh, ground and positive rail to uh, the, to the power rails of the breadboard. Now, all you need to do is connect this if we want five volts. So we're on V1, or we'll use that to control. As always match the colors, red goes to positive. And we'll just connect that to that binding post. Then black to black, which is for your ground or reference. Now I can go through and measure. Now this one is wired up for, we've got positive and ground. So positive is just up here. And so I can just measure the voltage to make sure it's actually going out to the breadboard. And you can see we've got five volts. And down here, this, this positive one is not connected, but we have a ground. And, and we have five volts. 